The Bunka. This is one of my favorite knife shapes in the Japanese knife world. Uh, it looks super, super cool and it's very versatile. Very similar to the Santoku in shape and size, differs mainly in the shape of the tip here. On a Santoku, we have what's called a sheep's foot tip, which is a little more gradual. On a Bunka, we have a K tip or reverse Tanto tip, which I find adds a lot of extra uses for the tip of the knife. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to use this knife, how to get the most out of it, and teach you some little tips and tricks along the way that we've picked up working in professional kitchens. So, without further ado, Bunka, let's get into it. All right, before I start chopping, I just wanna briefly talk about how to best set your station up for success. First, we're gonna talk about the cutting board, the surface that we work on. Uh, ideally, you're working on a wooden cutting board. Stay away from granite, glass, uh, bamboo, plastic if you can. Wood boards are going to be the best for your knives. You're gonna keep them sharp for longer. Of course, the best cutting board you can use for keeping your knives sharp is a Hasegawa High Soft board. Uh, but for today's video, we're gonna be working on this uh, end grain larch wood cutting board, which is awesome for your knives as well. The other reason I love these boards is they've got these, these little rubber feet on the bottom. That's gonna keep your board up off of the surface that you're working on and keep anything that gets underneath your board from causing like mold or mildew underneath the board. We also wanna have a damp towel next to your station. This knife that we're working with called the Fukaku Ryu from Rusen Hamono is stainless steel, so we won't have to worry about this guy rusting, but good practice to get into is, is giving your knife a, a quick wipe before you put it down on the board for any length of time. This is gonna keep any ingredients from getting stuck onto your knife, making it difficult to clean uh, in, in the future. Last but certainly not least, we wanna make sure we have uh, Tupperware or some sort of uh, receptacle to put our waste and our finished product into. This is super important, keeping yourself organized and keeping your board nice and clean is going to help you be more efficient. Uh, one of the things I was taught when I was learning how to cook was that our board is not a storage device, it is for chopping. So when you are finished chopping something, it goes into a receptacle, it does not hang out on your board because that's gonna cause clutter, make you uh, less efficient. Now, of course, we should talk about how to hold our knife before we get into chopping anything. And generally speaking, what you wanna do is find the balance point of your knife. The balance point is the point at which you can hold the knife uh, with one finger and it doesn't fall one way or the other. Next thing we're going to do is put our thumb on the opposite side and wrap our remaining fingers around the handle of our knife. This is going to give us the most control over our blade. It's going to uh, get our hand closer to the tip of the knife, which is going to make it easier to control that part of the blade. You will notice though that using my pinch grip eats up a, a good uh, inch of blade on my knife. So when we go into some slicing tasks with this guy, we're gonna choke down a little bit, exposing the entirety of our blade, and then uh, extend our index finger onto the spine of the knife. Now, if you've worked in a Western kitchen or maybe you've gone to culinary school in North America, this is uh, considered a no-no, that you should never do this. And I would agree with that when you're when you're chopping veg and stuff like that, but the argument here is that your finger is gonna slip off of the spine of the knife and you're gonna chop yourself with it, which, I mean, I'm sure it's happened to someone before. It certainly never happened to me before. Um, um, so, I mean, it's not, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a bad technique and it's certainly gonna help with our slicing. Again, getting our, our index finger closer to the tip of the knife is gonna give us more control. We're gonna expose the remaining part of the blade here and allow us to use the whole length of the blade when we're doing our slicing tasks. So, uh, now that we know how to set up our station, let's get into some chopping. I find the mark of a good knife is one that can chop uh, or dice an onion really, really easily. So let's get started uh, chopping up an onion here. So again, gripping our knife using our uh, pinch grip, uh, we are going to cut the top of this onion off first. It's always important to create a flat spot when you're cutting with round vegetables like this so they don't roll around and make them more dangerous to cut. We also want to use what's called a claw grip. Now, a lot of people describe this claw grip a little strangely in my opinion. Um, it's not so much that we want to use a claw, like it's, it's, you certainly want to make sure all your, your fingertips are tucked in, but what is really happening here is we're using our what I like to use, my middle finger, as a guide for our knife. Um, it may seem a little counterintuitive, but if I have my knife and finger in contact with one another, there's very little chance that I'm gonna cut myself, especially if I have all my fingers tucked back properly, because I know where the edge of my knife is 
using my middle finger um, as the guide. So don't think so much about using a claw, but just think about um, your, your middle finger or your index finger as your guide, and then your remaining fingers are just gonna hold the ingredient in place. We also want to think about tr trying to use the entire length of our edge. So um, a lot of a lot of beginner cooks will will push straight down into an ingredient, and this is not going to allow the knife to work like it's meant to. You've got this whole blade here. It's going to be much easier to start at the tip of our knife and push the knife away from us, and allow the the sharpness of our knife to to cut through the ingredient. We want to really focus on using the whole length of our knife to get through stuff nice and easy. Again, we're not gonna keep anything on our board here. We're gonna clean everything as we go. I'm just gonna do one half of this onion here. Maybe I'll julienne the other side. But we've left the root of our onion on here. This is gonna keep everything together as we're doing our, our radial cuts like this. Once we've done our cuts like this, we're gonna turn the onion around and cut across those and get a nice fine dice. Again, we're gonna use our, our claw grip or our guide finger here, or my middle finger. If you prefer to use your index finger, you can do that as well. And very similarly to when we were doing cutting the, the root off, we wanna to try to get as much of the length of the knife into the into the stroke as possible. Obviously, when we're working on the tip of the knife, it's gonna be a little more difficult because uh, we just don't have as much blade to work with, but you wanna sort of use a, a sort of a drawing stroke into your body as you're doing those radial cuts. We also wanna to try to follow the shape of the onion as we're going along so that we don't get any like big fat bits on either end. Now there's a hot debate about whether or not you need to do that, that horizontal cut through the onion. I personally believe if you've done your radial cuts properly and you don't have a big chunk here or a big chunk here, the horizontal cut is unnecessary. Our onion's already in like little layers here, so we really don't need to create any extra layers. So now that we've got our radial cuts done, we're gonna cut across those. Again, trying to use as much of the length of the knife as possible allow the knife to do to do the work for us. And there we go. Nice consistent dice with our with our onion. That looks beautiful. Again, we're not going to store anything on our board here. Cool. And since I got it here, I might as well do some julienne with this guy. Um, Brunois is described as like 2.5, like an eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch, I think is a, a Brunois. Um, so this might be more in line with like a small dice. We're not gonna talk too, too much about the exact like cuts that we're doing today. I find if you're just learning to use your, your bunka, um, being precisely an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch is not super important. Learning how to use the knife and make it do the work for you is the most important thing here. Um, so a julienne is described as like thin strips, uh, again, about an eighth of an inch. If you then cut across your brunoise, you get, or your julienne, you get the brunoise. Um, so you notice I cut the root off on this guy. That's because we want all of our layers to fall apart once we're finished. So we've got a nice flat spot to work on. We're going to, again, try to use a as much of the edge of the knife as we possibly can, using our middle finger or index finger as a guide and keep all the rest of our fingers tucked in here. Now going up the mountain is very easy. Coming down the mountain is very is very hard. Um, you definitely run the risk of of, uh, of cutting yourself. Um, there's less to hold on to, um, so that's going to cause issues. Um, so instead of doing that, what we'll end up doing here is just flipping our onion over, and now we can go back up the mountain again. And there you go. There's a nice julienne onion for you. The bunka is great for this, uh, uh, for onions, especially because of the K-tip there. When we're doing uh, tip work, you've got a really nice thin tip of your knife and you've got a little bit of extra height uh, caused by the shape of the tip here for your guide finger. Makes it very comfortable for that sort of thing. And then the bunka is typically a little bit flatter as well. So when we're doing our julienne, uh, we're not gonna end up with little stuck together bits because our nice flat profile is gonna make good contact. Um, majority of the edge is gonna contact the board as we're cutting through. So there you go.
If you can do, uh, I, I would highly recommend if you're just learning your knife skills to uh, go out and grab a, like a 50 pound bag of onions and just start chopping away. When I was first learning how to cook, um, that's something that I, I did uh, on more than one occasion and it really helped me um, improve my skills a lot. And I find like if you can quickly and efficiently do uh, an onion, whether that's dicing it or julienning, um, there's uh, there's little other ingredients that you'll have issues with. So practice with your onions, get those down. You're also gonna cut probably a lot of onions um, if you're working in a Western style kitchen. Uh, onions are the base for a lot of different things, sauces, salads, soups. Um, so getting the onion down is, is really uh, important. Next, we're gonna move on to some... Peppers? Peppers, let's do some peppers. Yeah, so next we'll move on to a pepper. Peppers are great because, um, well, I can show you a little trick on the, on the pepper, which is uh, cutting the top and the tail off. And then we're going to fillet our pepper open. And there we go, we've got a nice, nice pepper plank to work with here. Again, you'll notice I'm always like cleaning, making sure there's uh, no debris on my board. Now, peppers, especially cutting through the skin of a pepper like this can be really, really challenging, especially if your knife is not super sharp, but also if you're not using your knife in the proper way. So a lot of knife skills videos uh, on, uh, on YouTube focus, in my mind, too much on the, the size of the cuts that you're doing and not enough on how to actually use your knife in, a, in an appropriate way. So you'll notice here when I try to just push straight down through the pepper, it's pretty tough. It's not going through very nicely. But as soon as I start to incorporate some of that horizontal motion and I think more about pushing the knife away from myself and allowing the knife to pull itself through the ingredient, things get much, much easier. I'm again using my middle finger as a guide, keeping the rest of my fingers tucked back. And you can push, which I'm doing right now, or you can do more of a pull motion like so. Really doesn't matter, just depends on what you feel more comfortable with. And there you go, nice beautiful uh, julienne bell pepper here. Great for salad. Right, moving on here. So the, another reason the bunka is so awesome is because of how versatile it is. It is a little bit on the shorter side. So like a 240 millimeter guto, you're definitely gonna be able to do a little bit more with. Slicing tasks are gonna be made a little bit easier and larger vegetables will be a little bit easier to deal with. But uh, the bunka is super nimble and versatile as well. And when I'm doing like brunoise shallots and garlic or, or onions, I actually prefer something a little bit sort of more in the mid size like this. If you're a home cook um, and maybe space is a little bit limited, um, maybe space is a little bit limited if you're a pro professional cook as well. Having something super versatile like this but a little bit smaller is really, really handy. Um, something that I used to have to do a lot of is, uh, is uh, or a, a supreme, supreme oranges. So we'll just, uh, well that was terrible. Um, <laughs> We're just gonna take the skin off of this guy here and the tip of our knife is really gonna make this easy. I'm making it look harder than it actually is. But you'll notice I'm doing like, I'm still, again, I don't wanna just push it straight through. I wanna try to get some sort of, sort of back and forth motion. So generally you don't wanna like saw with your knife too much, but with a job like this, it's really, a, Hard not to. There are people that can just go like, shoo, shoo, shoo. I'm not one of them. Um, I take my time. I'm gonna make it through. And anything that's remaining on the bottom section here, we can just clean up when we come around to the other side here. But the tip of the, the bunker really makes this uh, fun to do. Super easy. And again, a nice sharp knife is gonna make things easier as well. Look at that, I got a lot of work to do on the other side here, oh my gosh. You could certainly do this with a uh, like a larger guito or something like that, but um, having something a little smaller like this is really going to make it easier, especially when I move on to the second part of this whole task, which is like holding it in my hand and, and taking out the, the segments of the orange here. So that's looking pretty good. Look at that. Beautiful little uh, orange segment there. No, no skin or nothing on there. Beautiful. 
Really easy to do, work, work off the board in your hand with a knife this size. Do be careful, you don't wanna cut yourself when you're doing this sort of, sort of thing. Well, you don't wanna cut yourself ever, but uh, cutting into your hand is always a little dangerous, so just be careful. But when I'm, when I'm doing, like this is great for, for salads and stuff as well. It may seem a little silly to, uh, to do this, but um, getting rid of the pith, that like sort of skin on the inside of the, uh, of the orange really makes it much more pleasurable to eat. And if you've ever worked a pastry station in a professional kitchen before, you've done probably 90,000 of these. Because on desserts and stuff like that, again, you don't want, the, you don't want that, uh, that skin uh, getting into your desserts or anything like that. It's not pleasurable to eat. But a nice, uh, this knife is like the perfect size for this sort of thing. I can easily control it as I'm going through. Getting nice little segments here. And then we're not gonna waste this either. We can, uh, we can juice this. When I was working uh, in professional kitchens, staff meal, we always had to do a juice. So I would save all these, juice these bad boys up for our, for our staff juice for, the, for, for dinner. And then uh, the, the, the uh, Supremes, you can either leave like this, but generally you're gonna end up cutting them into like smaller little shapes like this. And they look really pretty when you put them on uh, when you put them on like desserts or or if you put them in a salad or something like that. They just look really nice. Add a little pop of freshness. So there you go. Another task complete with our bunka. Let's move on to something uh, like slicing. Now again. We're trying to show off the versatility of this knife. Generally, if you had a longer knife, like a Gyuto or something like that, you might want to use that for, for your slicing tasks. But in a second here, you'll see just how uh, capable this Abunka is. So if you're looking just for like one knife to do it all with, if you're a home cook or, or maybe uh, a professional as well, um, the Abunka is certainly a, a great option. So clean my station up here a little bit. This will be the last thing we cut here too. So um, working on this uh, wooden board, you can actually absolutely cut uh, raw meat on these guys. We will have to uh, uh, clean it with uh, hot soapy water after and sanitize it properly. So that's why we'll, we'll do this the last thing we do here. But I just wanna show you guys just how easy it is to slice with this guy as well. So we've got a nice piece of flank steak here. It's a little bit big, so maybe I'll, I'll cut her in, in half or something down lengthwise. Yeah, cause like, look at this guys, we're a little bit, we're a little bit long for this. Or wide, I should say. We're gonna have a tough time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this right through here. Easy peasy. Now on a flank steak, nice piece of flank like this, um, all, of the, uh, all of the grains are running this way. We wanna cut across the grains. That's gonna make it more tender when we eat it. Um, Generally, I would cook this, maybe grill it first and then slice it, but if we're doing like a stir fry or something like that, um, nice thin sliced beef um, is gonna work perfect. So um, when we're slicing, again, we want to extend our index finger onto the spine of the knife. That's gonna expose the heel of our blade and allow us um, some extra, extra space to work with. And especially important when we're slicing is trying to use the whole length of the blade, um, get nice long drawing strokes in so we can cut all the way through. This is still a bit of a big, big old piece of meat for a knife this size. But um, again, if you're just looking for one, one knife to do it all, this is a great option. Still making pretty easy work of this piece of flank steak here. If I have to do a little sawing, you know, that's okay. Not ideal, but again, um, a bunka is for all those people out there that just want um, a really versatile knife that performs really well at, at every task and is a little shorter and more manageable to work with. And obviously we're doing, we're doing just fine with this bunka on this piece of meat right now. Nice thin strips of beef for our stir fry later. We're still using our claw grip as well. I'm using my index finger or sorry, my middle finger to, to act as a guide. I'm keeping the rest of my fingers tucked back here. And again, trying to, you'll notice I do like a one like this, and then I do a pull back like this and kind of point my tip down as I'm coming through to make sure I get that slice. Nicey nice. Sweet, there we go. And you know what, we've got, we've got a nice like little prep here for a little stir fry. I might take the oranges out, but uh, throw all my onions and my bell peppers in, tossy toss. 
beef in there, maybe an egg and some, some old rice from the fridge and we got a nice fried rice going, and put the oranges on top, that'd be delicious. Here you go guys. Uh, quick little video there just to show you how versatile the bunka is and how to properly use it and get the most out of it. Um, again, um, to, uh, biggest points today are making sure your station is set up for success, learning how to properly hold your knife, and learning that the, the most important thing when we're working with our knife is making sure we're using the whole length of the blade and focusing less on pushing down, but pushing away or towards us to make use of that whole length of the knife. I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel for more knife-related content, and until the next one, stay sharp.